Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how does the potential relay work, and how do you troubleshoot it? This video is brought to you by our friends over at Danfoss, and we have a link to Danfoss Learning down in the description section below. You may see a, a box like this, or a cube, along with a start capacitor on heat pumps and some air conditioners. So this is here just to help the compressor turn on. But the start capacitor can't stay in play with the run capacitor because that'll end up burning the compressor out. So that's what this little relay right here is for. It, it allows the start capacitor to be connected to common and herm on your run capacitor for only a fraction of a second. And then it disconnects the electrical circuit so the start capacitor is no longer connected. So if we follow the wire path, we see that we have one leg of the contactor right here is coming over to this side of the start capacitor. We also see that that's connected over to the common on the run capacitor. So then it goes through the capacitor, it comes over to number one on the potential relay, and then it comes over to number two of the potential relay, and then it gets connected over to the herm through this, this one happens to be an orange wire, over to the herm on the capacitor. So the compressor has to get up to three quarters of its speed in order to provide a back EMF from the start winding through the herm terminal of the run capacitor and over to the potential relay. So that's referred to as pickup voltage. It's the amount of voltage that the quill needs in order to open up these electrical contacts. The start capacitor stays wired with the run capacitor in parallel until the compressor supplies the pickup voltage for the potential relay to open up the electrical circuit. So between five and two is the coil, and between two and one are the contacts. So the contacts are normally closed here. You can see the, the coil right here, and you see these contacts. So anytime that this coil is powered, it's going to open up those two contacts right there just like that, and that's how it ends up opening the electrical circuit between two and one. So let's go ahead and test this out with a multimeter. So you see we have our multimeter set on resistance and we're reading 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance between contacts number one and number two. Now that's what it should be anytime you have the power off. But if we were to energize the coil, what would happen is this piece of metal would suck in and we would read oh well, which means that the contacts are now open. So if we let that back down again, we read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. And if we read the resistance value on the coil, you see that we're in kilo ohms. So 5.6 kilo ohms, so you're gonna have a very high resistance reading, but we are not reading oh well. If we read oh well, that would mean that the coil is burned out. So that would be an indication that the potential relay is bad. So right now with the power off, if we read a well between two and one, then that would mean that the potential relay is bad. That would mean that that bracket is actually pulled apart and not making contact. As well, if we read say 300 ohms of resistance or something like that, then that would mean that the inside of the contact is pitted. So the problems could be that you have a high resistance value between one and two at the contacts, where you could have this bracket bent back and you have no resistance value at all, they're not connected between one and two, or you could have these contacts welded shut, which would be uh, a very big problem, which would do damage to the compressor. You could also have the coil right here uh, being burned out or open, and once again, that would do uh, damage to the compressor because it would not take out the start capacitor. If you're looking for any of the tools I use out in the field, I have them linked down in the description below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.